All righty, Roo, and welcome to part two. <laughs> See what I did there? This is part two of this week's Yawa. We had a couple. That was a terrible rhyme. I know. You do it all the time. <sighs> Burn. <laughs> That was good, hon. I liked it. Oh, yeah. So, so good. It was bad. But, moving on. <laughs> and we digress. And we haven't even started. Okay, so we are here for part two. Uh, it's an eagle rare kind of night. And aside from that, we've got and mojito, some... Mojito. Which, which you look I like love mojitos, green. but I always struggle with getting the mint in my, my teeth when I'm drinking it this way. I think I should use a straw. If you that that is a novel idea, or option two, if we can get mint extract and then a couple drops. No, no, no. That would be like using lime juice and not real limes. Mm, okay, touche. Yeah. Terrible idea. Touche. Well, uh, we want to say if this is the first video that you're finding on our channel, lucky you, and hit the. Uh, subscribe button down there so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Also, go back and watch part one. This is part two of a three-part series video. We are going to get started with a few great questions. And speaking of questions, we're pulling them from the comments below. So if you say, hey, I've got a question. I'd like these two dorks to answer it for us. Throw it in the comments below and we'll do our best to grab it out if it's an extra good question or you throw something that's eye-catching like a funny joke, maybe something you pull off of a Laffy Taffy sticker or something that may get it thrown into the question pool for next week. Right. Yeah. Attention grabbers. They grab our attention. So this question is from Bryston Tanigua. I bet you got that one right. I hope so. <laughs> Aloha. Well, aloha. I'm wondering, based on your greeting, if you're from Hawaii, because that would be really cool. If you're from Hawaii, I definitely want to come meet you. <laughs> That'd be awesome. If you're not from Hawaii, I'm still interested in meeting you. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to greet you with aloha. Definitely. And say goodbye. I think that's how you say goodbye Isn't as well. Yeah. yeah. Aloha. Aloha. I have a Brittany that I'm training, and we used balls in the beginning to play with her. Ooh, got it. I see where this is going. She has definitely developed some rolling and mouthing issues when we switched to bumpers. Mm -hmm. Is there mm -hmm. anything I can do at this point? She's about six and a half months old. Yep. I'm Start over. I'm still playing a bit of tug with her when retrieving, but I can see her chomping on the bumper as she's running to me. And when I try to sit her next to me to calm her down, I try to take it away as soon as I see her mouthing it, but it's just getting more difficult as her jaws become stronger. Absolutely. So you're definitely seeing. You said six months, right? Six and a half. Yep. Six and a half. Okay. So you're, you're through the majority of the teething. Yes. All right. That, and I was going to mention that, you know, a lot of times dogs that are teething and you're trying to progress through retrieving through that process can develop some of those habits as well. Not yep. only with balls, but with that teething, you know, they want to chew on things. They, and so whatever they're retrieving gets chewed on and that can start to develop those behaviors. Like we say all the time, anything your dog's doing consistently, they're conditioning themselves to. So if they're rolling a ball in their mouth, that's how they're going to do retrieves. If they're munching that bumper because they're teething, that's how they're going to be doing retrieves. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're recognizing it. And I would say a couple things that you can try, tips and tricks, is finding a different object for retrieving, something that is harder, a little Ooh, firmer. You stole mine. That was the only thing I was going to say. <laughs> yes. I love it when that happens. Cause now he's got nothing anyway. So then find something that's a little bit harder. You could use a, you could use a frozen bird. Even, uh, you could use one of the Dawkins. Those are a firmer material. Um, as well as they're somewhat slippery when they get slobbery, Sli mm -hmm. slippery when wet. And <laughs> then if the dogs don't have a nice firm grip on it and they're messing with it and rolling it and, you know, tonguing it and stuff that, is going to easily slide and slip out of their mouth. So it encourages a nice firm hold as well as it's hard for them to munch and roll those types of, um, retrieving objects a little bit bigger around object as well. That really kind of 
stretches their mouth a little bit so that it's not closed and easily just munch, munch, munch when it's way wider. And that force to get it to crunch, crunch, crunch is more difficult. So those are some tips and tricks that you can try and use to help condition out some of those naughty behaviors, um, as well as evaluate your retrieving sessions and say, okay, are we getting any good retrieves, any not sloppy retrieves? Maybe we're getting two and then we start to digress. Then you want to say, I'm only doing two retrieves every session. And I know that probably seems like you're not doing enough, but if you're doing good retrieves, you're conditioning good behaviors. And eventually, once you've conditioned that, you can add in a few more retrieves. And you might just need to say, I'm not doing retrieving every day. I'm doing retrieving once a week and I'm only doing two retrieves, building on success, getting the good ones that I can condition those behaviors to before allowing more sloppiness to happen. We need to have a training seminar or I need to write a book or an article or something. The art of knowing when to stop a yes, training session. Because we talk about being greedy trainers. Yes. We actually just did another reaction video on, um, you know, knowing when to stop in a trained retrieve session as well. And that one's up now? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 We shoot so many videos. Sometimes we don't know if they've been posted yet. It's up. So we got the opportunity to watch a video session. This is a little bit off topic, but it's good information still. It relates back to what we're talking about with retrieving as well, though. Yep. So she's doing formal retrieving work with a dog. Um, dog's doing a good job, but has a lot of avoidance in there. And there is a time, I believe it's approximately. So if you watch through um, and you can see the little slider because we're watching somebody else's YouTube video inside of a YouTube video, inside of a YouTube video, inside of a YouTube video. No, inside, I guess just, you got stuck inside of a YouTube video. So um, it's just one YouTube video. But if you look at the slider at the bottom, you could see when it gets to about the point of five minutes, five and a that's half, when maybe? you just need to watch real close because that last 60 seconds there is when the primo primo stuff happens and we talk about it, we go over it, we show it. And then the rest of the session kind of goes and then kind of gets back up to kind of. Yeah. So, you'll definitely have to check like, from that a video. level standpoint. It starts here, gets to here. I mean, good. And then falls off and then finishes about here, which is something that happens a lot to a lot of people all the time. And then you end up where you you don't really ever climb because you're taking these baby steps, chipping One away step at it. One step forward, two steps back. Yes. So, um, but definitely check that video out. It's about retrieving as well. And I mean, Kat, you 100% nailed it. I mean, all of the things you mentioned well, are, you, are the things that I would have said. I have nothing to add. The last thing that I can add is, you know, your dog's six and a half months old, a little Brittany. If the sloppiness of the retrieving continues and you've tried all the tips and tricks, Ultimately, hard mouth can be fixed by doing formal retrieving work, but that's usually something that we don't recommend starting until around a year, depending on your dog's mental maturity. Um, so, and sometimes Brittany's can, you know, mature a little bit slower. So I would definitely err on the side of 12 months before you'd want to start that process. Um, but I think that's all I was going to say about that one. The only thing else that I would have to add is a question for you specifically, which is if you are in fact on the island or one of the islands, big island, little island, some island, Hawaiian between, island, Hawaiian island. Uh, what birds are you hunting? I'm curious to know. Throw it in the comments below. And uh, guys, we are approaching the halfway mark of part two. So smash the like button, as YouTubers might say. Those tubers. Hey, we're tubers too. I know. I, I know. What's the next question? So this is another question from Angelo Icomini. Nailed it. <laughs> sorry, folks. I'm really bad at these names. I'm sorry. Actually, I've gotten a couple compliments on saying people's names right. You're the only person right. I've ever heard say it right. I bet you're close. Yeah, because you aren't reading the question. So, of course, I'm no, the only no, one. No, 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 like, no, like people in general. Like, I've never had anybody get my name right. And you did. Yeah, so. so I've gotten a couple of those. So hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. Hello, I love so like Yawa Day. Fiction. What? I love Yawa Day. Well, we love it too. And that's so awesome. I, I think we should have an official Yawa Day. Yawa Day. Yeah. I get up and catch up on videos 
So that's plenty of time to drink coffee. I like your morning ritual. Yes. We so, get up and drink coffee and shoot videos sometimes. Or catch up on Patreon. That's yeah. a typical morning routine for us. Yeah, Patreon. We get up because it's early. Get Patreon, emails, Facebook messages, Instagram messages done before most people wake up so that when the real day of the business starts, we can call people. And I still make the mistake of calling people sometimes and forgetting about time zone changes. I accidentally called a client the other morning. It's like, oh yeah, it's eight o'clock. It's perfectly normal to call someone at this time. Or six o'clock. Unless they're in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. He was up, so it was okay. It worked out. Oopsie. <laughs> so, um, my bad. The the other side of that that's kind of cool is uh, Patreon is a community where we answer questions on the daily for you, for anybody that does not know. So if you're looking for your question to be answered, you can throw it in the comments here and hope, or you can get it answered every single day on Patreon. It's uh, almost every single day. I don't miss very often. Um, but the other side of it is they just opened up a new option so that you can actually subscribe for a whole year and make uh, and get a pretty substantial savings on the whole deal. Yeah, you so get a discount. Check that out, patreon.com slash Standing Stone Cows. And I know we always talk about joining Patreon. If you've got a question that's just burning a hole in your pocket that you got to ask and you need an answer. But there's also the option to just support us and support the content. Because, I mean, we are putting out a video a day. It's a lot of time that we put into it. Um, a lot of equipment necessary to do those videos. And all of the money that we get through Patreon goes to being able to create more content for you guys. 100%. So... Back to Angelo's question. So my question is for pointing dogs. Sit or don't sit? That Ooh. is the question. Ooh, the biggest dilemma in the history of pointing dogs. Obviously, you teach sit. But I do have a friend with a dog that sits on point, And I train with someone who insists you should not. Give your reasoning. And have you seen dogs that sit on point? This is fantastic. And this is going to be the last question of the because episode. Because it's going to take that much time. To start with, sit or not to sit? The answer is definitely the dogs can learn both 100%. Every single dog everywhere in the history of pointing worlds can. Even those English pointers, I'm not hating on you, but if you're truthfully, if you're being truthful with yourself, you know for a fact your pointer isn't the smartest tool in the sharp uh, shed of uh, rocket science, uh, rocket surgeons. And Colors in a box and all those. Eating crayons or something. (laughs) They are fantastic bird dogs. They have a ton of ability. They have all the things. I'm not hating on pointers. Love pointers. They just aren't the smartest. Okay? Moving on. So, yes. Teaching sit and having a dog not sit on point is completely acceptable, completely normal. Uh, We teach our puppies to sit. If you watch some of our other YouTube puppy training playlist videos. 40 seconds have gone by and the people are now typing in their comments about how I'm wrong about pointers. So I just want to say again, while you're typing this, um, I refer to my favorite dog in the whole world, Vex. Okay. He is a stud muffin and an awesome short hair and he is just dumb enough to be awesome. He's got a ton of natural ability and he is not dumb. He's not the smartest dog in the whole world because two smart dogs get themselves in trouble. Two dumb dogs struggle with the learning process. So you got to have them just dumb enough to be perfect. It's like a happy medium there, right? Right in the middle. And you've said that about Vex in the past. Yes, all the time I say it. I love him to death. And he is, yeah, he doesn't question things then. You know, some of those really intelligent dogs. It's a nice trait to have. Yeah, some of those really intelligent dogs start questioning things, thinking on their own a little too much. And that's, yeah, what gets them into trouble, makes them destructive at times. Little Houdini, escape artist, getting into things. Yeah, heck, the the smartest dog that I probably ever met, we specifically added tops to some kennel runs just for when that specific dog visits for boarding. Ellie. (laughs) Ellie. Uh, what you got in the car run over there? <laughs> Shut up. We digress again. I want to answer this question. And you it. keep distracting me, but I also have a story about Corona. So that's also something I want to talk for about. Part three. Okay. Part three. You guys have to tune in for part three. Okay. So if you follow along with some of our puppy training videos, 
and playlists, you will see we teach all of our short hairs how to sit. Our lab, how to sit. Sitting is something that we teach. It's an easy thing to teach. It's a good obedience tool. Yep. Um, yep. But we also recognize when puppies get into auto sit. Auto where sit. They become um, automatic sitters. They sit for everything because they've been rewarded for sitting in the past. So, hey, I'll just sit and I'll get a reward for that. And it's up to you as a trainer to make the distinction and say, I didn't ask you to sit for this specific situation. So I'm not going to reward that. Or if I ask for another behavior and you sit, I'm not going to be like, well, sure, I'll reward for that. And then I'll still work on getting you to kennel or recall or something. Um, You need to, if you're asking for a behavior and it's not exhibited, you need to get that behavior before you're doing a reward. We've had people all the time that come out and they're like, yeah, my dog is great at this, great at that. Here, let me show you. And they'll try and woe them in the, in the kennel and they'll say, whoa, and their dog will sit and they're like, good dog. Well, that wasn't a sit. If you just want your dog to stop moving or to be in one place. Okay. But you need to distinguish what that is. Sure. So we get these dogs, these puppies that start to automatically sit for things because we've rewarded them for that in the past. And so a lot of times in those situations, I'll start rewarding those little puppies for standing. Yep. And I think I've got a we think we've got some videos out. <laughs> Several of them, but I think uh, Zephy most recently. I think, but also it could have been a live video or yeah, something true. on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, so anytime a dog is automatically defaulting, a lot of times is the word that we use, defaulting to a behavior, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, if they show I automatically do something, Usually it's going to be a problem, whether it's sitting or whether it's anything else. They just get stuck in one thing. And we uh, recently, and I don't, I'm not picking on anybody, but it's a patron that uh, was sending in messages and he said, I think I broke my dog. And I'm like, broke a dog? How? Well, he was working on place training to help with inside behavior. And that's fantastic. It's a great thing to work on. And he said, now uh, she essentially defaults to the place board and it just stays there and it's like stuck there. And okay, well, sure, that's great. But that doesn't show an understanding uh, of exactly what you're asking. It shows an understanding of something that's important. So anything that's a default is bad. Yes. So if you're starting to see a default of sitting, start rewarding a standing behavior, which would ultimately be kind of all four feet, stop moving, would be kind of an introduction to woe. We don't clicker train to teach dogs to woe. That's Mm, where we use our positive pigeon drill to start that process. But None of our dogs sit on point. None of our personal dogs have ever sat on point. And sometimes people run into a problem because their dog has become a default sitter. Then when they start formal woe training and there's a little bit of pressure applied. I don't even think it requires a default sitter. I think a default sitter makes it easier towards that direction. Okay. A dog that's comfortable and understands that sitting can be something that they can be rewarded for or it's a good thing. Um, then a little bit of pressure gets applied without a good enough understanding. That of, is the ticket. Yeah. Of what the yes. behavior is. Because like we talk about with all training, first we teach a behavior yes. using positive reinforcement, whether that's clicker training and treats or clicker training and retrieves or just verbal marking and retrieves or using a pigeon for our reward and our marker um, with our positive pigeon drill. Uh-huh. What we teach, all of those behaviors first with positive reinforcement. Then we reinforce those behaviors that they already know, already have a good understanding of, um, a consistent understanding of. And then we reinforce using an e-collar with negative reinforcement. And that is when, if the dog doesn't have a good enough understanding of the behavior we're actually asking for, they get confused and they go back to doing something that they understand, which If it's sit, then they're going to try and sit when they feel that pressure applied, the negative reinforcement applied with the collar. So making sure your dog has a true understanding of the behavior and the cue before introducing a collar or any kind of negative reinforcement based training around low training would be really important. So your dog doesn't try and sit because they think that that's what they need to do to avoid the pressure. Okay, folks, so that's all the time that we have for part two, and you're going to have to jump over to part three to hear the end of the rest of our answer to this question.